Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jack Mini Trades back here again with another video, and today I'm going to be going through all of the ways that you can get the absolute most out of your iPhone 14 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max, 12 Pro Max, or if you have the new 15 Pro Max, any iPhone, this is going to be the all-in-one, one-stop shop for you guys to improve your videography and photography skills on your phone. So starting off at the top of the list, one of the one things that I really recommend that you guys do is make sure that you go ahead and turn on Do Not Disturb when you are going to be going ahead and actually starting a shoot. So just go in here, tap on that focus button, Do Not Disturb on, and that will basically help you guys out to stay in the moment when you're creating there's nothing worse than getting interrupted when you are trying to get a really nice picture and then somebody calls you or something else happens and it ruins your shot. The next thing that I would highly recommend you guys do is get a cleaning kit for uh, cameras. It doesn't have to be specifically for iPhones. It could be for mirrorless cameras or whatever. Um, but basically just make sure that you have like a microfiber cleaning cloth, perhaps some cleaning solution. Uh, you could even have something like a blower. Um, or one of these uh, cleaning pens with a nice little hairy brush here. Um, any of these tools is gonna come in really handy for you when you're going to be going and filming because let's face it, we have our phones in our pockets all the time. They're always getting dusty, dirty. They may have some uh, grease or other things like that on the cameras. My recommendation is to always carry around something like this. Just squirt a little bit of cleaning solution on the end there go around to the front of your cameras and just give them a nice wipe down, get all of that grease and everything else off. That way you have a perfectly clean set of cameras to work off of. So that's gonna be a, another thing that I would really highly recommend that you guys do. So the next thing is of course, getting our camera settings straight. So pop into settings, and we'll scroll down here to camera. All right, so what you're going to wanna to do here is make sure that you have your cameras set up right off the bat before you go out and start trying to shoot something. You definitely don't wanna make any mistakes there um, where you're fumbling around with your phone trying to get your settings straight when you're trying to capture a moment or something like that. Make sure that you do this right when you get your phone. So first off, when we go here to record video, you can change these settings inside of the camera app, so it's not entirely necessary that we go through all of this here, but you can record, of course, 4K at 24, 30, and 60p with your iPhone. Generally speaking, I'd say only record at 4K 60 if you wanna do slow motion. I know that there's a lot of you guys out there who just think that bigger is better, the bigger number, being 60 is better than 24, but that's not actually accurate. Uh, generally speaking, when you are consuming content like this video here, it's gonna be shot at 24p, and that's going to give you a pretty natural, true-to-life uh, view, as well as the shutter speed here is one over 50 or one over 48. So that way that gives you natural motion blur. If you see that I move my hand here, you can see that there's some blur. Um, so, you know, these are some nuances to shooting that you may not know if you're just getting into it for the first time, but this is where you can go to set this up, or you can of course do this inside of the camera. Um, if we go down here, you can see show PAL formats. So PAL is another standard, uh, of videography that exists for people in Australia and um, sort of that side of the world. If you're in the United States, just leave this off. You're under the NTSC standard. Um, and that's basically just down to what the standard frame rate to shoot at is. In the United States, it's 24p. Elsewhere with PAL, it's 25. Um, but that is that. You can also go here to enhance stabilization. Um, Leave that on, generally speaking, you're going to be using your phone for uh, handheld video, and so you wanna get the most stabilization that you can. Uh, action mode and lower light. So this here is going to be a really important feature for you to use if you're using action mode and you're trying to do it at night or 
where there's very little light around, this will reduce the amount of crop and uh, help with the stabilization so that way you get the most uh, light into your scene as possible and you have the least amount of cropping since cropping on digital noise just looks awful. Another thing here, we can turn on HDR video. Uh, I would leave that on, generally speaking, the HDR video looks pretty nice, especially if you aren't a colorist or you don't know very much about color grading. I'd say that that will give you a pretty nice start. So if you are shooting and your current FPS is not sufficient for the level of light that you have, if you have auto FPS on, you can make it go down to uh, 30 FPS, or you can have it between 30 and 60p, or you can just turn it off. Um, not really sure uh, so much why you would want to use that, but it's there for you if you want. We also have lock camera. So this could be a nice feature if you just want to have one camera at a time when you're recording video. Um, if you do that, if you start recording on the wide angle camera, it'll just stay on that wide angle camera. Even if you zoom in, it'll just do digital crops. If you have this off like I do, then you can switch between all of the different lenses while you're recording video. I would definitely recommend leaving this off because if you do need to zoom in or something like that, it's much better to optically zoom than it is to digitally zoom. And then here we have lock white balance. So this is something that I would actually turn on. What is really important about white balance is that you have it set properly to begin with at the start of your video. And then when you start recording, you want it to stay stationary. Generally speaking, unless you're in a situation where you're going inside to outside, back to inside, and you're changing lighting scenarios all the time, um, that might be a place where you'd want to have auto white balance, but generally speaking, I like to keep my white balance constant because if it's uh, drifting around, it can be really distracting for the viewer. So that is that. Moving on here, we can do slow-mo. So this is going to be in-camera slow motion, uh, which you can basically edit the in and out points of it. It's pretty nice. Um, the iPhone allows you to record 1080p at 120 FPS or 1080p at 240 FPS. So both of those are pretty slow. They'll give you a lot of uh, latitude in terms of slowing your video down. Unfortunately though, they're only HD. And the other thing is that because it's such a high frame rate, you're gonna need a lot of light. So this only really works well if you're in a nice controlled studio setting like this, or where you're outside and you're trying to capture motion out there. If you want to do 120 FPS, that's basically roughly five times slow motion on a 24p timeline. 240 is going to be about 10 times slow motion. So you can get really slow slow motion, which is great. Next up, we have record cinematic. So this is if you're in your cinematic mode, you can change what the uh, frame rate is for that. You have choices between HD at 30 FPS, 4K at 24 or 4K at 30 if you're on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. If you're on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, I think it's uh, limited to 30p, um, but 24p is what I always leave mine at since I am much more of a fan of that cinematic look. Um, so for formats, you can basically change uh, what you want here. You can have it as high efficiency, which is what I leave it on. That basically optimizes the image quality and also the file sizes, gives you that H.265 extension. If you are working with an older computer, it may not be as easy to edit. So you might want to switch to most compatible in that case. But for me, I work on a, a M1 Max MacBook Pro and have no issues editing H.265, so I leave it there. Here we have for photo capture, um, you're definitely gonna wanna turn this on, uh, Pro Raw and uh, resolution control. This is going to be something that'll give you a lot of latitude to push your colors around and change your camera settings after you take a picture. If you're familiar with professional cameras like this here, this is uh, my Sony a7R5. Um, this is of course, a professional grade photo camera and I shoot pretty much everything in RAW. Just gives me the most flexibility afterwards. So it's really great that on the iPhone, you have the ability to shoot in RAW. And then pro default, you can do uh, HEIF max. 
uh, up to 48 megapixels. You can do Pro Raw 12 megapixels or Pro Raw Max up to 48 megapixels. Generally speaking, I leave it on the max. I want to have the most image quality. So that is that. And then for video capture, this is another thing that's pretty nice. Um, although you are definitely going to need to have a large storage capacity to take advantage of this in any meaningful way. And honestly, I don't think that it's worth it unless you have the new 15 Pro Max and can record to an external SSD. But you can record Apple ProRes. That'll give you the most uh, quality in terms of your video. And it'll also give you a little bit more flexibility in post. And it's going to be easier to edit on older machines or even newer machines. It's just a more simple codec for them to work with. But Generally speaking, I'd leave that off. It takes up a ton of storage. The next thing here, preserve settings. This is a really great thing that I think a lot of people don't know about. So I wanted to show it off to you guys. Uh, the way that preserve settings works is it allows you to change settings inside of your photo app or inside of your uh, default camera app. And then when you close the app or you turn your phone off to go to a next location and then you turn it back on, those settings that you have with the green tick here are going to automatically be uh, exactly as you left them. Otherwise it'll reset to defaults. And so um, some of these things you definitely want to have reset to defaults, others you might not. So for me, uh, I have my camera mode as a thing that gets remembered. So if I'm in photo or if I'm in video, it'll remember that the next time that I open up the camera. Um, for me, I also like to keep night mode on. So that is something that is pretty important for me. I never really like to use the flash unless I absolutely have to. Um, so night mode is definitely something that I like to keep on. Uh, you can also have your action mode be something that you want on all the time, although I wouldn't really recommend it since action mode does significantly crop on your video. You're going to be getting lower quality video, generally speaking. So I'd only really use that if I needed to. Uh, but Pro Raw and resolution control, that's something that I like to leave on. So if I'm shooting in RAW and I turn my phone off and then turn it back on again, it'll be still in raw, so I don't have to constantly think about that. And then live photos, I like to have that on as well. Um, if you are shooting in raw though, just be aware that you're not gonna get live photos. All right, so moving on here, we have uh, record stereo sound. I would do this, generally speaking. Um, it just splits your channels into left and right. You always have the option to make it mono in post, um, but I like to have the stereo option use volume up for burst. You can use this if you want. Um, generally speaking though, you might accidentally push your volume button and you don't wanna take like a thousand photos. Um, so use that uh, at your discretion. Scan QR codes, definitely leave that on. A lot of people these days put QR codes for you guys to scan, to get apps or to um, find web pages easy or something like that. Um, that's generally something you want to leave on. Uh, show detected text. That's another thing that's really nice. If you are out and about and say that you don't know the language, you can take a picture, scan the text, and then translate it to your native language. That's something that I really enjoy. Um, shared library. This is something that you can set up, which basically allows you to have a shared library with all of your family members if you're connected uh, via the iCloud home. Um, so that is something cool. Grid, I like to leave that on. I like framing up my shots and having grid lines there. It just makes that a little bit easier. Level, that's another thing that's pretty nice. It allows you to figure out when your camera is perfectly level. Um, mirror front camera, I never leave that on. It just kind of looks weird. So view outside of the frame. Uh, this is something that you can have on or off. It can be kind of distracting. Basically what this is, is if you are going to frame up a picture around in the borders, you'll actually end up seeing uh, some more of the picture than is actually inside of the frame. And that's basically just giving you a preview of what it would look like if you went to the ultra wide camera. Um, it's kind of like a gimmicky type of thing, but you know, I just leave it on. It doesn't really hurt anything. Um, prioritize faster shooting. That might be something that you want to do. Maybe not. Um, this basically just allows you to take more pictures at a time. 
uh, at the expense of some in image quality sometimes. Uh, lens correction, leave that on. It'll do its best to sort of correct for any distortions or aberrations in your image. Macro control, also leave that on. If you want to get in really close to something, you're going to need to use macro mode. And macro mode is a pretty nice thing on the iPhone 13 Pro Max through 15 Pro Max, um, or any of those series phones. So those are all of the settings inside of the settings app. Let's get straight into the actual stock camera app. As you can see here, we are on the stock iPhone camera app and I had just cleaned up my iPhone. Uh, so our image quality is looking pretty good here. Just going through some of the settings that we have available to us up here, you'll see we have our live photo um, button. So if you push this, it'll turn live off. If you turn it on, it'll turn live on. Live photos are really great if you're trying to get uh, any type of motion, like say that you have kids or something like that and they're running around doing something. It'll capture a couple of seconds before and after the photo and you can do some effects afterwards like bounce or loop or long exposure. Long exposure is generally useful if you're trying to do light painting or if you want to capture waterfalls or something like that and you want to make the water look silky smooth. That's what that's for. Up next here, we have we have these photo styles. So I don't generally use these too much since I like to do all of this stuff in post, but you can have this as something that you build in to your iPhone. Uh, you can increase the warmth or decrease it. Using that slider there. You can also change the tone. So you can see it kind of gives us a little bit of a different look if we go up and down here. Or you can just swipe through some standard ones that they have set up for you. Generally speaking though, I don't really mess around with this too much. Um, I just kind of like to leave it on standard. So the next thing that we have here is uh, shared library. If you have this ticked, and you have shared library set up, every photo that you take from now on will be put into your shared library. Um, I generally leave that off. I like to just select photos that I want in my shared library at the time that I go to actually move them. Up next here, we have our uh, night mode. So you can leave this on or off. Um, if you have it on, it's going to give you a couple of settings to actually make that uh, night mode shot. Um, it depends on the lighting situations, what you're going to have as your maximum uh, exposure time. For this particular setting, since it's pretty well lit, I have a max exposure setting of one second. But if you're in pitch darkness, you can have it go all the way up to, I think, like 20 seconds or something like that. Um, and that's going to be really great for if you're doing astrophotography. The next icon that we have down here is our flash. You can turn that on, you can turn it off. Um, Again, like I said, I would highly recommend against using flash wherever possible. Um, the flash is just generally not that great of a thing to use. Reduces your image quality and it tends to look a little bit um, harsh on your subjects. But it's there if you need it. And then up here we have our raw button. So if we click on raw max, you'll see that it removes some of these settings, um, like it turns off our live photos and night mode and all of that stuff, since those are really computationally uh, bound features. For the moment, we're gonna turn raw max off so that way we can look over here on the right side or the bottom if you're holding it uh, vertically. So to get access to those features, you just wanna push this little arrow button here. It'll move things up and now we have a bunch of settings here that we can go through. So again, this button here is to move things to your shared library automatically. If you look at this three uh, interconnected circles button, this is your photo styles. So you can do mono, silver tone, noir. Um, so these are just some nice pre-made photographic styles that you might be interested in for your photography. Again, I don't really use those too much. For timer, you can have a timer, you can change it to off, three seconds, 10 seconds, 
whatever you want. This is really great for if you have it set up on a tripod like I do here and say you wanna be in the picture and you wanna get the best quality possible, obviously you're gonna be using one of the rear cameras. And so you can just set that timer to three seconds, 10 seconds. It'll also have a flash on the front of your phone to show you the countdown. Um, so that is a pretty cool thing. Exposure compensation, if you do it here, it'll be a global exposure compensation. So you can set this to be like minus 1.7 or plus two. And then whenever you go from one uh, photo point to another, um, it'll remember that you uh, changed your exposure settings. So be careful with this. Um, another way that you can do this is if you tap on your screen here, you'll see that little sun icon. If you grab that sun icon and bring it down, that reduces your exposure. If you bring it up, it increases your exposure, and that's a single shot exposure uh, compensation that you're doing there, where, like I said, this one's more of a global exposure compensation. So then the next thing that we have here uh, is our aspect ratio. So the native aspect ratio of your iPhone is going to be four by three, but you can also have it shoot in square or in 16 by nine. But I like to generally leave it on four by three since that's going to give me the most quality, um, especially if I'm doing raw or other things like that it isn't really cropping in on anything. But if you don't really care about having that and you just wanna have the convenience of being able to share to social media or something like that, you can of course change your uh, aspect ratio here. Here's our photo styles. Um, again, like I said, you can customize these to your liking, but I like to leave it on standard since I don't always know what I want my photo to look like until I'm actually in post editing it. Um, so. That's just something to think about. Again, you have your live photos. You can change that to on or off. Uh, night mode, again, down here, you can change that as you like. And then our flash, we can turn on and off. So that's generally speaking all that there is as far as the camera. Um, and then of course you can swap your camera to the front. So here is the front facing camera. With the iPhone 14 Pro Max, you can actually have it either cropped out or cropped in. Um, so that's something nice if you are shooting with a bunch of friends and you need to get more uh, people in the frame, you can crop it out a bit. And this gives you a little bit more of a wide angle view. So that is something that's pretty nice. And then of course, on the rear side, you have of course three cameras. So with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, we can do ultra wide. We can do wide angle, which is 24 millimeters. You can do this two times, which is a digital crop on the uh, primary sensor, the wide camera. And this uses quad pixel technology as long as you're not shooting in raw. And then if you do the three times, that'll switch to your telephoto camera and that'll give you your furthest optical reach. And then if you push and hold on any of these, you can zoom in all the way to 15 times. That's gonna be a really heavy digital crop and it's generally speaking not gonna look very good. Um, so I would just stick with any of these um, actual buttons here and not really go outside of that. All right, so that's pretty much it as far as uh, photos are concerned. Um, you also have, of course, portrait mode. Portrait mode is a pretty nice feature. Um, sometimes it works really well, sometimes it doesn't. You have to kind of experiment with it, but Apple has gotten pretty good uh, recently at simulating bokeh. Um, so if you are taking a picture of a person, um, it generally does a pretty good job of cutting them out and blurring the background. You can also change any of your styles here uh, to do contour lighting. You can have it at a stage light. Um, you can do stage light mono, or you can do high key mono. Um, these are just different lighting styles that Apple does some computational photography to get you that look. Um, of course, you're gonna have to have an actual subject. It doesn't really like uh, focusing on this camera here but you can also change what camera you're using. So here we have the two times crop on the 24 millimeter. 
you can do it in one times or you can do it at the three times. Um, and you see there, it just blurred out the background a little bit. Again, with something like this, it's not really going to do the best job in the world since it's got a lot of complexity here. Um, if you really want to get good subject separation on something complex like a camera setup like this, obviously you're going to need to have an actual camera that's capable of giving you that depth of field. But for in a pinch, this looks pretty nice. We can also go over here to Pano. So panoramas, uh, these have to be taken in vertical. They can't be done in um, landscape, which is kind of a little bit unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. Um, but basically the way that you would do this is just set your phone up on a tripod or you can hand hold it and it'll guide you through the process of uh, basically taking your panorama. You just wanna keep the arrow inside of the line and you wanna move fairly slowly so that way you can stitch everything together nicely. All right, so now moving on to one of my favorite things, which is of course getting into video. So inside of the video settings, we have a bunch of things that we can play around with. So starting off here, as I had mentioned before, you can change your frame rate and resolution in the settings app, or you can change it inside of the actual photo uh, camera app. And so here up at the top, we have our frame rate. You can change between 24, 30, and 60p if you're in 4K. So you can see we're going between the different settings. Again, I typically leave it in 24p um, unless you're trying to shoot slow motion, uh, in which case I would shoot at 60p. And then here we have 4K. If you change that to HD, it'll look like that. Um, generally speaking, you have a 4K camera in your pocket. Why not use 4K? It's going to give you a better quality, preserve your memories a lot better. The next thing down here, we have our action mode. So if you push on that, that'll give us access to action mode. Again, action mode really requires a lot of light to be effective. Um, you can turn on the low light action mode, but generally speaking, I found it to be pretty gimmicky. When I made my original review of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I did some tests using the Osmo Mobile 6 for stabilization and then using the action mode on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And I found that in low light conditions, especially just getting something like a gimbal is going to be your best option. It's going to give you way better light control and it's going to look uh, just way better in general. Um, action mode, really, you need to be under stadium lighting or you need to be in direct sunlight for it to actually look decent. The other thing is that at least on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, you're limited to 2.7K or HD quality. Um, so it's really not that great. Like I said, I don't really mess around with action mode too much. I think that it's kind of gimmicky. But moving on here, you can also push this button here. This will add your video to shared library automatically. Um, you can also turn the flash on and off if you want. Again, the flash doesn't really look good, especially in video. So I leave that off pretty much all the time. And then if we push the uh, little carrot button there, we have access to all of those features right here. Plus we also have our exposure compensation. So again, you can increase or decrease exposure. This is sort of a global adjustment, like I said. Um, so just make sure that uh, you're happy with whatever setting you choose there. Those are pretty much the features as far as video. Another thing that you can do, um, and this is something you can also do with photos, of course, is you can tap and then, like I said, you can decrease or increase the exposure compensation by grabbing that little sun and moving it up and down. Additionally here, you can also lock your autofocus and your auto exposure to a specific point on the frame. Um, so that's another thing that's pretty nice that you can do. Uh, you can also do that, of course, with photos. And that way, if I put my hand here, you see it's not focusing on my hand. It's still focused out there on the camera. So that is that. We can also go here to cinematic mode. So cinematic mode does a couple of things and it can be pretty nice. Uh, for doing video. Generally speaking, I'd only really want to do cinematic mode if I'm videoing people uh, where there's multiple subjects in there. What this does is it basically combines portrait mode with video. As you can see, there's quite a bit more background blur 
than in the standard video mode. Uh, so this is simulating a depth of field. And if you click on this little f-stop button, you can change the uh, digital f-stops all the way from f2.0 to f16. So obviously if you're at f16, everything's gonna look really sharp, even in the background. And if you go all the way down to f2.0, it's going to make everything really, really blurry and it's going to make that depth of field pretty shallow. So this is a pretty cool feature. Uh, for those of you guys who want to get that professional cinematic look without actually having a real camera like this. Again, you can also move things to your shared library directly. You can turn on and off your flash if you push the caret button. You can also do exposure compensation as a global thing. And cinematic mode is only available on the one times and the three times telephoto. So here if we do the zoom in on the three times, you can see what that looks like. And as far as this, if you have multiple subjects in the frame, it'll put up little boxes around them. Uh, it recognizes people, and I think it also recognizes pets. So you can basically tap on one of them and it'll focus on them and blur the background for the others. Um, so you can get some pretty cool dramatic rack focusing uh, out of this. Another thing to be aware of that's really cool with this particular uh, feature is that you can adjust your focus afterwards. So it has all of the depth data and other things like that stored inside of the phone. And since again, the phone doesn't have a uh, low enough aperture to actually be able to get great bokeh um, out of camera without doing this digital processing, everything's effectively going to be in focus as long as there's not a huge difference between uh, the person in front and the person in back. So you can actually change the uh, focus point afterwards um, if you need to. Uh, the next thing here is slow-mo. So again, you have your ability to change your frame rate right here. So you can do 120, 240, and HD is the quality. And then time-lapse. So if you wanna do a time-lapse, this is basically uh, really nice if you're out in like a city environment or something like that and you wanna see all of the cars moving fast. Um, that is something that you can do there or if you wanna do like nighttime. I'm not sure if you can really get great night video on this with stars. Um, I haven't really tested that out, but um, time lapses can be pretty cool. So that is pretty much the last feature that you have there. So moving back to the photo uh, settings here, Another thing that's really cool that you can do is if you press and hold on the photo button and then you drag it to this lock here, you can start recording video automatically. And if you're inside of a video and you're recording, you can actually take a still by just pressing the shutter button there. We just took a photo. So if you wanna take a burst photo with the iPhone 14 Pro Max or really any of the iPhones, um, you just wanna to touch and hold the photo button and then drag down and you'll see that our counter is going up. We're taking lots and lots and lots of photos. If we then go in here to our photos, you can see that we have a burst of 63 photos. And then we can select here and we can scroll through all of the frames that we've taken and select whichever one we like the best. Let's say that we like this one. You can just tap on done and then keep only one favorite. So that will allow you to free up storage. If you took a whole bunch of photos, you can just select the one or multiples that you really like and then delete everything else automatically. So that's a pretty cool thing. So if we move in here to video, again, I would highly recommend if you guys are going to be trying to use your iPhone as far as a professional work type of thing, if you're going to be filming, uh, say your son's wedding or your daughter's wedding, um, I would take the time to actually really learn the iPhone. And I would also highly recommend picking up some sort of stabilization. Uh, right here, I have a tripod. A tripod is going to be obviously your most basic and simple solution. Um, but it works really, really well since it's going to basically keep your iPhone perfectly steady, perfectly stable, um, and it'll also give you access to nice moves like pans and tilts and all of that stuff. Just make sure that if videography is your main goal that you buy a fluid head tripod. Uh, there's a bunch of different types of tripods out there. Fluid heads are going to be your best bet for video. 
because they actually have uh, some hydraulic fluid in there that's going to allow you to smooth out your motion quite a bit. I would also recommend getting something like a phone holder like this one here. Um, this is from Ulanzi, it's really cheap. Uh, it's just a clamp style, so it's pretty universal. Another thing that I would recommend, although this one is pretty nice, you can also go and get something a little bit more expensive like this MagSafe one from Moment. This is a per portrait and uh, landscape one, so you can basically mount your phone in portrait mode or in landscape mode. It has a little quarter 20 thread down here and uh, a cold shoe up here. The Ulanzi also has a cold shoe, so if you wanna add a light or a microphone or something like that, you can do that. Um, but having stabilization is really, really important if you're planning on using your phone for anything more than just casual videography. Um, it'll just give your videos a little bit more of a professional polish. Speaking of professional polish, the unfortunate thing about the iPhone's stock camera app, although there are a lot of great features, like I said, that um, cinematic mode and some of those features like that, you don't have control over a lot of the things that pros would care about. Particularly, you don't have control over your shutter speed and you don't have control over your ISO. All of those things are set automatically for you by the exposure compensation. And since that's the case, you're going to basically get a lot of times, especially if you're out in uh, bright sunlight, you're going to get really, really uh, jittery, jerky motions. It's not going to look smooth. It's not gonna look natural. As you can see here with this blur, you're not going to get that if you're taking an iPhone video outside with the standard camera app. Obviously to get this type of video with this blur, you're going to need to invest in some filters uh, so I would recommend picking up anything from Moment. Um, their variable ND filters are really good. And you can also pick up a case from Moment that allows you to attach full 67 millimeter camera filters. Um, that's what I would recommend because then if you bump up to a real camera down the road and you have a lens that has a 67 millimeter outer diameter thread, um, you'll be able to use the filters on your iPhone and on your camera. But at any rate, you're going to need, if you want to have that professional polish to your videos, you're gonna to need to get a camera app that allows you to take full control over this camera. And for that, I would recommend picking up the Moment camera app for, I believe it's like $5 or $6, or, the best one is the Blackmagic camera app since it's absolutely free. Um, and the Blackmagic camera app is really nice too because it gives you shutter angle. If we open this up here, you'll see this is what we're presented with. We have our lens here at 24 millimeters. Our FPS is 24, shutter 180 degrees. So you may ask, well, what does 180 degrees mean? Well. Basically, back in the day, uh, when we were still working with film cameras, there was a shutter that would sort of rotate around in a circle. And if you set it to be 180 degrees apart from the opening, um, that would basically give you some amount of time between when the shutter would be open and when it would be closed. And people have found that using 180 degrees for that gives you the most natural motion blur for whatever frame rate you're at. So if I'm at 24p, having it set to 180 degree shutter roll means that it'll set my shutter speed to one over 48 or one over two times the frame rate. That is something that's really cool that's unique to the Blackmagic camera app. And if you wanna set that up, just click on the settings here. And we have our codec here, H.265 is what I like to leave mine on, resolution 4K, color space, leave it on Rec. 709, or if you wanna do HDR content, you can do Rec. 2020, or you can do P3 D65. Um, the next thing that we can do is have our time code display, uh, set it to run. You can do time-lapse recording in here if you want. Uh, anamorphic D-squeeze, this is gonna be great if you have a moment. Uh, lens or something like that that has a 1.33 or 1.55x D squeeze. Uh, you can put that on here and then have that as you are viewing it, you can see exactly what it's going to look like. 
You can enable vertical video or leave it off. I have it off since I only shoot video and landscape, generally speaking. Um, lens corrections, leave those on. Volume button to trigger recording, you can leave that on. Uh, lock white balance on record, again, leave that on. Uh, shutter measurement, here's where you would change that from speed to angle. So if you have it on speed, you'd have to set uh, 1 over 48 if you're at 24p, 1 over 120 if you're at 60p. And remembering to do that can be kind of a pain, especially if you're in a high stress situation. Leaving it on angle just gets rid of all of that. Trigger record indicator. Um, so this is something that you can have on if you want to have a sense that you actually started recording since, you know, the iPhone is pretty much a big piece of glass. There's no real buttons unless you use the uh, volume up or volume down buttons. So this will be a way to give you a bit of feedback um, when you actually trigger your recording. You can also change uh, how your audio is recorded. So if you're using an external microphone, you can change that here. The monitor, you can do focus assist, focus assist as red, uh, guides opacity, guides color white. Um, so you can really change a lot of things here. Um, I'm not gonna go through everything, but you can even load LUTs on here, which is pretty cool. Uh, Blackmagic Cloud, if you have a subscription to Blackmagic Cloud, you can basically take videos directly from your iPhone, have them uploaded to Blackmagic Cloud, and then start editing them on DaVinci Resolve. Um, so that is a pretty cool thing. And yeah, you also have a chat for Blackmagic Cloud users. Uh, media, so this is anything you record inside of the app, can be put in here, and you can just export it to wherever you need to. So. Actually, colored lines is probably the best way for doing focus peaking on here. But if we tap here, um, we get a bunch of settings. We can turn our zebra's level up or down. So right here we have our zebra level at 80%, 84%. Um, so you can see that anything that has an exposure reading above that or at that is going to be uh, with zebra's. So here, if we tap on this button here, this is our focus. If we touch the auto button, it'll go to autofocus. And if we unclick it, it'll be in manual focus. So we can set our focus manually. That way, if something comes in frame for a second, it doesn't mess up our focus point. That's really good for you professionals. But for a lot of people, I'd say probably leave it on auto is going to be your best bet. Um, exposure compensation. You can leave this on auto or you can change it however you like. But again, I like to set my exposure manually. So I like to leave my shutter angle locked at 180 degrees. For stabilization, you can leave stabilization off. Generally speaking, I'd only do this if you're locked off on a tripod or something like that. That way you're not cropping in on the image at all and you're getting the full quality. Um, but if you are hand holding or something like that, or you're moving around a lot, uh, you might want to set it to standard or cinematic. This will basically just change how uh, the camera's IBIS works and how the lens stabilization works to give you the most smooth uh, effect. Generally speaking, I'd leave it on standard or cinematic. Extreme is a little bit too crazy with the crops. Here we have our uh, zoom, so we can do one times, two times, four times, or eight times. And then here we can also set some metadata for our shot. We can have it as a real number, scene number, take number, um, give lens data, uh, anything for interior, exterior, day or night shots. Um, so that's some pretty cool stuff and really nice features for people who are filmmakers or want to be filmmakers. Also, you can change your white balance here by just tapping on white balance You can set it to manual. And now here we can adjust our white balance accordingly. So let's say that we wanna go down here to a little closer to daylight. ISO, here we're at 426. You can increase the ISO, that'll basically boost your exposure. If you decrease it, it'll decrease our exposure. The lowest that the iPhone ISO goes is ISO 57, um, but generally speaking, that's not gonna look too good um, unless you're out in really bright conditions. So typically leave it right around like ISO 400, ISO 100. 
ISOs on phones are a little bit difficult to gauge because they don't really tell you what the native ISO is or the base ISO. Um, but that is something for you. And yeah, you also have a histogram down here. So generally speaking, the way that you want to read a histogram is if there's a good concentration of the color channels in the center and nothing touching the left or the right, that's going to be your best bet for getting the most information out of your scene. If instead you have a lot of things clustered on the left side, that means that your shot is underexposed. So you can see here that we have a lot of things uh, on the left side. So our shot is pretty underexposed if we boost our ISO up a lot to ISO 5000. You can see that our blue channel is really clipped out. And so that is going to be not what we want. If we bring it down here to, let's say like ISO 250 or something like that, that's a pretty proper exposure. We have a good balance between darks and lights. Again, also you can, if you're in autofocus mode, you can just use your tap to focus. Um, and then down here at the bottom, you can see your available storage and you can see how much time you have left to record at the given frame rate and codec and all of that stuff. So also you can change your uh, lens type here if you want. You can do 13 millimeter for your ultra wide, 24 millimeter for your one times and 77 millimeter for your three times. So that's how you switch between the optical uh, options available here. So here's our 77 millimeter. That's gonna give you that nice dramatic look. And even though, again, like I said, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, it's a fixed aperture and it's not really going to give you that great depth of field even though they quote these cameras as being like f2.8 or f2 or uh, f1.7 f1.8 um, they're not really accounting for the fact that you're working with a really really small sensor size they give you the full frame equivalent in terms of focal length but not in terms of uh, aperture and so your depth of field is not going to look the same for this camera as it would for like an f2.8 77 millimeter it would be really really blurry background really shallow depth of field where this is uh slightly less of a depth of field so that's pretty much it as far as your uh full guide to iphone videography and iphone photography if you guys have any questions make sure that you drop them down below i always respond to all of them and I really love it when you guys engage with me. It keeps it pretty fun and interesting on the channel. If you guys have your own tips and tricks, definitely also leave those down below. And yeah, if you also wanna pick up anything that you see here in this video that I've talked about, I will be leaving links in the description. And definitely also make sure that you share this with your friends. If anybody that you know is just getting into iPhone or um, if you think that somebody could benefit from this, definitely share this video with them and make sure that you subscribe as well as we're trying to get to 1000 subscribers before the end of the year. And it would be really awesome if you could help us do that. And I will see you guys in the next video.